Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today to film a spooky book haul. I went a little crazy in book buying in the past month or so, and I decided that there's enough books for me to split it up into two separate hauls, one being more of spooky, kind of like Halloween feeling books, and later on I will give you a different book haul with just normal books, I guess. <laughs> Um, I don't have a costume on today, my biggest reason being because I actually have to go to work after this and I just did not have the time to actually do like cool makeup for a different outfit, so you get a spider web top. I am a spider queen. Let's kind of just get into this haul, there are 15 books for me to show you. Actually 16, or 17 books for me to show you. Okay. Cool. Let's just dive in. I'm not sure how thorough each of the summaries are going to be, so I apologize ahead of time if I don't give a good enough one. I just don't know a ton about most of these books. So the first one that I have to show you is Classic Tales of Horror by Edgar Allan Poe. I'm actually so excited for this. It is just uh, sort of a collection of all his creepiest and scariest short stories. Obviously Edgar Allan Poe is known for his very dark and mysterious and just twisted writing and I just felt like this is perfect for the Halloween season. Also it had a little black cat on it with like a noose around its neck and I'm kind of a sucker for anything with black cats on it. My my black cat has made me that way. <laughs> Next up is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I'm so excited to finally have this in my hands. I've been wanting this since before the new cover came out and then the new cover came out and I was like wow if I don't get that in my hands right now I'm just gonna combust. So this story is about two guys named Victor and Eli who are roommates in college and they're basically geniuses. They're both experimenting trying to figure out how people with extraordinary powers get their powers and they finally come to the conclusion that a near-death experience is the way to do it. So I mean they obviously do the near-death experience thing to try and get powers. Uh, I also know that it follows it in the future when one of them is getting out of jail and they are now mortal enemies. So it's just a really interesting villain story and I just can't wait to get to it. And it's super spooky and also it kind of reminds me of the X-Men and I love the X-Men. So I'm all here for the story and I can't wait to see what I think about it. Next up is Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel. So basically this book follows Beatrice uh, a year after her boyfriend dies and she had been part of this really fun popular friend group and they haven't talked since her boyfriend died. They, their group just couldn't really handle the stress of it. So fast forward to a year later and they're all meeting up and Beatrice hopes this is the moment that she's finally going to figure out what happened to her boyfriend after his death had been ruled a suicide and she doesn't think he committed suicide. Unbeknownst to them, they accidentally get into a car accident and end up in this thing called a Neverworld wake where basically all of them is dead unless they can all agree that one of them survives. And the Neverworld wake is actually super interesting. There is a lot of thought that goes into it and there is a ton of just variations in the world and I think that it was very interestingly done. I did feel, I ended up actually already reading this, I did feel like the ending was maybe a little bit unsatisfying but overall I think it was a really good story. So, I also picked up Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. Uh, I'm, oh, this was so good. I did end up reading it. Seven years ago, a research group on the boat of the Itar Gaddis went out to the Mariana Trench to figure out if there's a mythical sea monster in there. They were filming the entire thing for a mockumentary for a TV show and they never returned. Their footage did return though, and they, it shows some very interesting things. So it's been seven years and they're and there's a new research group launching to try and figure out what happened to the old one and to see if there really is mythical creatures living in the Mariana Trench. It's super spooky, super fantastically written. It is so scientific in nature and I just really enjoyed it. I'm not like the biggest science nerd or anything like that, but I just really enjoyed all the science and it is sort of like in the near future. So there are some scientific advancements that obviously we don't have yet and I thought it was a really nice addition to the story. Uh, it's not too, too scary, but it definitely is, keeps, it's keeping me away from the water for at least a little bit. And I just think it was really well done because it's like, so it's possible. Like everything that happens in this, like I could see happening and it just makes sense. It's just, it, it's very well explained and I really enjoyed this. Definitely perfect for the spooky season. 
I don't really know why this book is in my spooky pile, but it is, so that's gonna be The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I am so excited to pick this up. I honestly don't really know anything about it. All I know is that it's won the Hugo Award for the past three years, so 2016, 2017, and 2018, which is basically unheard of. It's an adult high fantasy story that people love. I haven't heard a lot about it on booktube, but the little that I have heard of it makes me think that I will like it. I don't know what it's about. I'm not about to try to figure out what it's about. I kind of want to go in blind and just see where this story takes me. So I, I just can't wor wait. Like the little tagline is, this is the way the world ends for the last time. How did it end the first time? Oh, I'm just so curious. I, I don't know why it's in my spooky pile, but maybe it's because it's a very heavy fantasy story and I consider heavy fantasy to definitely be a fall thing. I just... The next two books kind of go together, the first one being Queens of Fenburn by Kendara Blake. This is the novella for the Three Dark Crown series, and I am actually really excited about this. I hadn't heard anyone talking about this until I think Piera uh, picked it up and she said that she actually really enjoyed it, and it's like a prequel of The Lost Oracle Queen, which is interesting. I just think it's gonna be... She says that she learned a lot about the characters and ended up falling in love with the world a lot more with after reading the novella, which is always a good thing. I already love the world, so I just think this is gonna be a nice little bonus. And the next one obviously is Two Dark Reigns by Kendara Blake. This is the third book in the Three Dark Crown series. I have been in love with the series and, oh, I haven't really explained what it's about. So basically there are three sisters and each of them has their own power. They are triplets and they were separated very, very young to train because one day they're all gonna have to battle against each other to become the one true queen of the queendom. And that's just how the world works. It's very dark, very mysterious. The magic is very interesting. We have a poisoner queen, we have an elementalist, and we have a naturalist. So it's kind of self-explanatory, but basically the poison queen, she can drink poison just fine. It's okay. The naturalist queen is more in commune with like nature and animals, and the elementalist has like fire, wind, like the classic magic powers and I just think that the sisters are so unique and so fascinating and the story is just so dark and atmospheric the this island they can't get off of it is just so intriguing and that's why I'm actually so interested to read the Queens of Fenburn because I I kind of want more insight on this island and sort of how like the queendom came to be so hopefully it'll give me that after that, I have Speak by Emily Carroll. This is the graphic novel version. I actually saw Mackenzie over at Mackenzie Lane talking about this. She said she hadn't read the actual one, but she'd read this graphic version and she really, really enjoyed it. And I actually do have the normal version. I think I had to read it for school and I never did. But this graphic cover is just gorgeous and I really wanted to get my hands on it. And I think that in graphic novel form, I will most definitely be more willing to pick it up. I don't know too much about the story. I'm pretty sure it has to do with a rape and just sort of the aftermath of that. And yeah, that's kind of it. That's all I really know about it. The back says I said no, so I think I'm on the right track. I'm on the right track. But yeah. Also, it was on sale on Book Outlet, so I just how could I not buy such a pretty book when it was so cheap? <laughs> I also got Wicked Like Wildfire by Lana Popovic, and I really don't know much about this at all. I've heard amazing things about it, but I don't know anything about this, honestly. So from what I'm gathering from the summary, it is a book kind of having to do with magic in the real world, and we have two twin sisters who have gleams, which is their form of magic, and it seems very abstract and interesting, and their mother doesn't want them to ever fall in love or to ever let anyone know about their magic because it could ruin their very carefully kept secret life, but they want to rebel against their mother, and in doing so, they accidentally release a curse that leaves their mom on the brink of death and leaves the twins trying to figure out the mystery of how they even got this magic and family secrets and drama. It sounds super interesting. I honestly, it was a cover by. Look how gorgeous this is. I, uh, again, when things are on book outlet, I have a lot of trouble saying no, but oh, I love when like the cover match, like when it's the same color. Oh, that's so nice. Um, 
But yeah, it's actually super fascinating. This is perfect for the spooky season. Very witchy, very like mysterious and family secrets. I love it. So yeah. Next up is The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel. This is not spooky in your typical sense. This is spooky in the please don't tell me this actually happened kind of sense because it's definitely a possibility everything that you read in it it's just disturbing very disturbing uh tons of trigger warnings i'm not even sure like what trigger warnings to give i know there's a lot of alcohol and i think there's talk about drugs there's just some weird weird sexual stuff going on so warnings there but yeah this is about a girl named lane who whose mother commits suicide, and after that, she has to go and live with her grandparents, who she had never met. Her grandma, or her mother had ran away and just never talked about them. So she goes to live with her grandparents, and everything seems perfectly normal and happy, and she has a cousin named Allegra, and they're, they're having fun and everything, but she discovers this awful family secret a few months into living there, and runs away. She leaves it all behind. Fast forward 10 years and Allegra has gone missing, and it is the only thing that would bring Lane back to Roanoke, and she does come back to try and search for Allegra, wondering if the family secret had finally gotten to her, if she'd ran away, or what, but she wanted to find her cousin that she had left behind so long ago. It was a fantastic book. I've already finished this. I really enjoyed it. Very disturbing though, so spooky in the please please tell me this doesn't happen kind of way but you know it probably does after that i have mirage by samaya dodd i don't know too much about this story i know it's a very interesting sort of fantasy story where a girl looks very similar to the princess of the kingdom and therefore she is taken back to the castle to sort of masquerade as the princess when she's out in public because the princess is hated she's very mean and People don't like her, so they use this girl as her decoy. I also think that it turns out into like a nice friendship uh, where the princess and her lookalike just turn into friends and they kind of learn about each other and sort of work past things. I'm not 100% sure though, but it is a nice short story. Fantasy is always perfect for the spooky season. I got this in the Owl Crate, which is why it's the black kind of and gold edition. Yeah. I also picked up Because You Love to Hate Me which is a villains like anthology which was created with booktubers. I This was really popular I think last year when it had first came out which basically it has 13 incredible authors like Renee Audier, Victoria Schwab, Samantha Shannon, Adam Silvera and it's in collaboration with 13 booktubers that gave them prompts for their stories and it's obviously just villain stories and villains are the epitome of what Halloween is in my opinion so this is perfect for the spooky season. Next up is probably my most anticipated, no my second most anticipated, that's fourth, my second most anticipated book of the year because obviously Kingdom of Ashes first, and that's Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, the sprayed edge version. This is the UK edition. I bought it on Book Depository. I just, uh, again, this is like a half spooky, half just like fall kind of reads, and this is such a fall read. I loved Strange the Dreamer. It's so hard to explain, but basically it just has this most, just has the most gorgeous lyrical writing and these fantastic characters. And Lainey Taylor just has such a way with words. Like she makes her story so delectable and I love her so much. But Muse of Nightmares follows the events after Strange the Dreamer. If you didn't know, Strange the Dreamer is about this librarian named Laszlo Strange who is obsessed with this lost city of Weep. He has been obsessed for as long as he can remember since before Weep was called Weep and then one day everyone forgot the actual name of the city and instead could only call it Weep. And he's been so curious to find out what happened and one day a convoy shows up to his town and he gets the opportunity to go and visit this place and it's just so perfect. That is just the beginning of the story too. Like there's so much more, there's so much more that happens. It's dark. It's, oh, it's fantastic. So I re I'm really excited to get into Views of Nightmares. I also picked up Circe by Madeline Miller. I also own uh, The Song of Achilles. I just haven't read it yet, 
but I don't think you actually need to read them in order. But Circe in Greek mythology was a witch and I really am excited to see Madeline Miller's take on it. I've heard nothing but good things. I really don't know if... I, I'm not sure how it's told. I just know that people really loved it and this is just such a gorgeous map. Wow, they went full out. I, I don't know anything else about that except for like Circe's story in actual Greek mythology and I really love Greek mythology if you guys didn't know. Also like Circe being a witch in general is very spooky but I just feel like this is the perfect sort of vibe for the spooky season like old Greek stories and retold and magic and yeah also it's just so pretty. Look at that. <laughs> All right, three more books, guys. We're almost there. I feel like I'm crouching at this point, probably. I picked up Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. I am really excited to read this. It's a thriller, and I've heard really good things about this, surprisingly, for a young adult thriller. I know young adult normally doesn't end up being very scary, kind of like how I felt about Never World Wake. But this one, I've heard, has just amazing plot twists. From what I understand, this girl moves to this town and she's like the new girl and no one's ever the new girl and she falls into this group of friends and one day they go to a party and one of the friends goes missing and so obviously she's suspected because she's the new girl and but there's tons of other suspects the other friends are suspects like it's just I, I don't know anything else about it but I really feel like going to thrillers sort of blind is the best way to go because you just want to be surprised at every turn and I heard that this has amazing plot twists so yeah, I can't wait to try and read this. The last two books are sort of just the heavy fantasy aspect of fall, not very spooky, but <laughs> nonetheless, I'm, I've been excited for these for so long. And I'm surprised I haven't hauled this yet. <laughs> That's The Poppy War by R.F. Kong. I feel like I got this a really long time ago, but I haven't hauled it for you guys apparently, and yeah, I am so excited about this. Did I haul? I feel like I hauled this. All right, well, if I hold it, forgive me, but if not, here's the Poppy War. I bought this. I'm really excited about it. It's an adult fantasy story. It follows this girl named Rin who is sort of poor, and when her family decides that they're going to sell her off for marriage to make money, she decides that she's going to actually take a test to see if she can make it into the academy, and she scores ridiculously high. I think she scores the highest out of anyone in the class, and everyone just doesn't feel like she belongs there. It's very discriminatory against her because she has darker skin than all her other classmates. She has a very different background and they just don't believe that she could possibly have been that smart. And it just follows her story and I want to say that this is actually a villain origin story but I might just be, you know, making that up. Um, but she gains an amazing tutor who teaches her sort of shamanism, I believe. I, that was a really bad explanation. There are plenty of really good explanations for this but basically there are tons and tons and tons of trigger warnings for this. I've heard it's insanely graphic. Personally, I've never really had a problem with graphic content. I I don't know, I just, I guess I was exposed to it very young. I, I always watch very graphic uh, movies, but I also have heard that there's plenty of other trigger warnings against like sexual assault and just all, if, if you have any fears going into books ever, I would definitely look up the charge for this. Um, I know that Piera said that she's normally fine with graphic content and this made her really cringe at times, so I'm very interested to see how I feel about it. And the last book that I have for you guys today is The Queens of Innis Lear by Tessa Grattan. I've been very back and forth on whether I should buy this. I feel like half the reviews I've seen on it have been amazing, half of them have been not that amazing. But so The Queens of Innis Lear is based off of a Shakespearean play, I believe it's uh, called King Lear, and it just it's her own twist on it. There are three princesses. So three daughters, one crown, all out war. Because that's really all I knew about it was that it's based off of the Shakespearean play and that there's three princesses. So Gala, Ruthless Commander, Reagan, Master Manipulator, Elia, Star, star Blessed Priest. An island at risk and an empire poised for ruin, the line of Lear will be soaked in blood. So I've heard like half really amazing things about this, that people really liked her take on it, that it was a very like intense fantasy story. I've heard though that it can drag. It is obviously a very big book and some people said that it didn't need to be that big. I am excited to see where I lie on it. I obviously really love fantasy and I've always really liked Shakespeare as well. So I can't wait to see how I feel about this. Whew. All right, that's my book haul for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. I know it was lengthy. 
that's really, yeah, that's that's my thoughts on it. Let me know down below if you've read any of this, these books or if you're excited for any of them. And yeah, I make videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays most of the time, and I will see you in my next one. Bye. All right, how do I pick all these up for a picture? I feel like I already hauled the Poppy War. God, you guys are gonna think I'm freaking crazy for buying so many books. I swear they were all on sale. <sighs> I scared Luna. My phone!